Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios, brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Muscles, the Missing, also brought to you by Elum Nithel, Think Tank of the Future. The Sweet Song is by Serena Wagner, based on the life of King David, now on Amazon. Also, Heidi Tan Music, check out the latest at HeidiTanMusic.com. We're here with Trifford Lee, who is an author, screenwriter, director, model, actor, with a winning multiple awards uh, growing up in East Germany, and studied theater history, and also directing finishing her, her bachelor's in Bavaria and also receiving a Fulbright scholarship and master's in the U.S. and has a new book about um, a beautiful young vampire calling a suicide hotline, asking for advice on how to die. And uh, Bring It Up is also a feature film for 25 that's coming up. So we got two for one special tonight. Live, ladies and gentlemen, of Plus Two's in beautiful downtown Los Angeles. The amazing author, screenwriter, director, model, actor with winning multiple awards growing up in East Germany, now in Los Angeles with a book, Death of the Nightingale. And we'll talk more about the movie, ladies and gentlemen, the multi-talent, Annika Pompel. Annika, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. All the things I think I need to carry you around in my pocket to tell people exactly who I am just that way. <laughs> well, except I don't bite. That's the problem as well, too. So I'm a nice little vampire. I got to say that. So That's good. I do bite. So there's that. <laughs> right. There you go. I think we do offset in a way, too, that... Um, so basically, you're an author, screenwriter, director, model, actor, winning multiple awards, growing up in East Germany. You studied uh, theater history, directing, finishing um, your uh, bachelor's in uh, Bavaria. You received the Fulbright Scholarship and um, studied master's in the U.S. You have a new book about a woman named Grace who's a beautiful young vampire calling a suicide hotline in Atlanta, asking for advice how to die, and later yeah. connecting with a hotline worker and embark on a journey, helping Grace die and the other forgets how to save lives. And also, you also did some uh, fellowship work as well, too. We'll talk more about that. Plus, a movie that's come out in 25. And before we get to all that, Annika, tell us how I first got started. Oh, my God. Uh, that was, I, I listened to you, and I'm like, oh, my, that's so much. Um, how, how do I get started? Um, I way was back, Machine. Way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going way, way back. Um, East Germany, you know, the wall just came down and I always loved entertainment and telling stories. So I had these little get togethers at like seven to nine years old where I invited all the neighbors and made them pay for listening to my stories. They at the end <laughs> thought it was cute. My grandfather thought it was funny and I had some sort of business sense. So he was very supportive about it. And that's kind of how I got started because I love telling stories and coming up with them on the spot, right? So. Oh my gosh, yeah, I can imagine. It's like, either pay me a dollar or yeah. we're gonna have somebody bite you. You better pay now, kid. No, 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 I wasn't threatening. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> was, you know, it was more like cute kid telling stories but asking for money. Yeah, that's um, that's what that was. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so interesting. And what was that um, one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career, besides um, asking kids for money and telling stories? There wasn't really one moment. It was just, you know, I have this thing where I sit down with complete strangers and somehow a lot of them open up and tell me their life story. And it's different moments with different people because I sit there and sometimes I listen and I know this would make an incredible story. Not just the way they tell it, but I see some sort of structure in it that I'm really interested in, depending on what it is. And then I usually ask them for permission to dive a little bit deeper, to do some research with them, to work with them pretty closely. And then I start writing a piece that sometimes is very close to what they told me and sometimes is very far away from it, but based on it as a core. Oh, my gosh, that's something as well, too. And uh, you also wrote books as well, too. Who are some of your favorite authors, writers, and your favorite books growing up? Oh, right now, I'm going to go with just right now because I keep reading all the time. And I just uh, went on vacation. So I read a lot of books and I read The uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I absolutely adored. And I wish I could read it again for the first time. I also read In the Dark, Dark Woods, a little thriller um, that's about to come out as a movie as well. I read Fantastic Land, which I also loved, although it's probably too close to the Florida a disaster at the very moment yeah i think very nobody wants book. to talk about milt at this time they've had right, enough right. lean now milt's like what's next right i know it's it's devastating isn't it mm -hmm. and certainly did as well too and of course speaking of movies you've um talked about having one in a book as well too we'll be talking about one of your future films in 25 um right. maybe just share some uh your favorite movies and who are some of your uh favorite actors actresses and also uh producers going on 
Growing up, I loved movies that, you know, had something to do with kids. So I loved The Goonies as a classic. I loved The NeverEnding Story. You know, Michelle Ende as an author is a brilliant writer, very fantastical, but a little dark. Um, I love Stand By Me. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. It'll always be in my top three. Um, it's It changes, you know, whenever there's a movie that really impresses me, then it changes kind of in my order, in my top five, top three, and then it remains there until something else really sparks something. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly does as well, too. And of course, your love for books, your love for movies. Um, You got some of yourself, Death of the Nightingale, and also you got a movie coming out in 25. Yeah. We'll talk more about that with Annika Popple. But first, listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today, 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Whitener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Whitener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those who love be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has got great news. And Eve 11 and George by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley Eminence. So grab your copy today of Burgos Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Weiner Show is brought to you by Illuminate, the great think tank of the future. Bring scientists and engineers together from all over the world, creating a method to construct a renewable generator. This unique product operates on a closed loop system, generating more energy internally than it needs to function. The X electricity can use to run everything from homes, power grids, phones, laptops. The power source is renewable, highly scalable, and most importantly, self-regenerating. Visit facebook.com slash elumnithical. That's E-L-L-U-M-I-E-N-I-P-T-I-C-A-L today. Also, Mike Wagner shows part to by Sweet Psalmist by Serena Wagner, based on the life of King David, including three exquisite paintings in King David's Psalms. The Sweet Psalmist gives us a new perspective on the life of David through the Psalms he wrote and his time as a shepherd where it started and complicated yet turbulent relationship with King Saul. It's story of love, betrayal, repentance, hope, and more. Check out the Sweet Psalmist by Serena Wagner on Amazon. Keyword Sweet Psalmist Serena Wagner. Also brought to you by Heidi Tan Music, the Smash Hit Baby Comeback, and new music coming soon. Check it out, HeidiTanMusic.com. Also, check out the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com on 40 podcast platforms. Burn on countries, take us with you on any mobile device, and subscribe to us on all platforms, including YouTube, Spreaker, Spotify, and more as well. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast, T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And if you're interested in merchandise, Email me to the Mike Widener Show at gmail.com or leave in a comment section if you want more information. Also, check out the Mia Molson Zia store for great books, merchandise, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. And coming soon to Amazon, Missing Two by Mia Molson Zia. Double the fun, double the suspense. Coming soon to Amazon and support us on the Mike Widener Show and Graphem, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. We're here with author, screenwriter, director, model, and actor winning multiple awards growing up in East Germany. Annika Pompo here on the Mike Wagner Show. And before we talk about um, Death of the Nightingale, yeah, an interesting um, journey going from East Germany over to L.A. And tell us more about that journey. Yeah, so, um, you know, at a certain point, I wanted to go to, uh, to school and I went to a music school as a high school. It was a bit of a boarding school and uh, we traveled around Europe. And that's kind of where my love for arts really started. And then after that, I studied theater history and directing. Um, got a Fulbright scholarship that brought me over to the U.S. for the first time. Wow, uh, first, okay. I was in Indiana for a year. And then from there, you know, I did my GRE and all the grad school stuff and did graduate school in Savannah, Georgia. How do you like that? And now you're in Los Angeles. And uh, yeah. tell us more about that journey. Well, after, you know, Savannah finished, I worked on a movie, uh, met a couple people, got hired by one of the people on that movie set. And that brought me out to L.A. with a job, which was really nice because it was a really good start. And from there, I did every side job you can possibly imagine here in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best way to get to know people, get your feet wet and just right. about everything under the sun, too. And um, 
there's just a lot you have. Of course, you've um, been a fellowship, um, of course, with um, with Sundance and also um, WIF uh, fin Finance Labs and also um, Writers to to Wallets, everything else, International Screen Art Association. I mean, you had fellowships, even Sundance as well. That's a big honor for you. Um, Sundance was a finance fellowship. They have different labs, and the, the, that was the Women in Film Sundance Finance Lab, which I really enjoyed because they do a really good job of picking up smaller independent filmmakers and teaching them essentially how the financing of that world works at that time. Um, so I really hope that they continue that lab and you know grow it because the industry is changing so fast, so quickly. It can only help because it's already different again than it was five years ago. Right, exactly it with COVID and just about everything happening as well too. But of course, you also made your mark with uh, Death of a Nightingale. And um, I kind of think this makes me think of a movie as well. It's a new book uh, about Grace, a beautiful young vampire calling a suicide hotline in Atlanta. And um, tell us more about the book and what inspired you to write it. Um, the book is a bit steamy. It's fun, right? It's pretty sexy. Um, <laughs> as you said, a vampire calling a suicide hotline asking for advice on how to die. But instead of uh, just getting that, uh, both the operator and the vampire get a little bit more out of that. They have a connection and they get to know each other. And it's an absurd situation. You know, if you're a phone operator, you are there, you know, with your microphone and your headphones and somebody tells you straight up, hey, I'm a vampire. Um, it probably would take you aback a little bit and you'd be like, yeah, right. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you, right. E either either stand a line or hang up. It's one of the two. Right, it right. depends on yeah. depends it's night as well if your supervisor is not there right. Night, so right you know and uh, in that moment it just it just takes her back and she doesn't believe it but the story continues and they fall for each other and they have an adventure of several different kinds and um i quite like my story it's cute it's steamy it's fun it's dark it's all the right things right mm -hmm. and, um, and maybe and maybe just a couple of uh ventures they go on as well too not all the ventures you'll reveal maybe right, just right. one or two just to get some ideas well, um, we have Atlanta almost as a character in the book. So you see a lot of it. You see the aquarium um, where they deal with specific things that are research and science-based. science, science -based. And we see a lot of the abandoned pieces that Atlanta had to offer. Atlanta is one of those cities that arch architecturally is actually quite interesting. And a lot of people don't know that. You know, there are two different layers to Atlanta. One builds on top of the other. So a lot of the architecture is forgotten. And we dive a little bit below the surface and we see a lot of that through what Grace and uh, Ness go through. And that I quite like because I like Atlanta. I've worked there frequently and I love the weird neo-goth um, buildings that it has to offer. I think it's interesting. That's interesting. You mentioned by Atlanta, of course, with all the neo-goth uh, buildings and um, things that I have to offer. What else are the things you like about Atlanta? You know, mostly the people. The people in Atlanta are very honest, very Southern, but with a little bit of an edge to it. And I've always enjoyed that, you know. Um, I've worked there frequently on sets and afterwards I've gone out and they're very hospitable. They take you to places that you wouldn't know just without even a second thought. They take you in, you're part of their family for that night and then they show you things around. And that's wonderful. I like Atlanta quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're now in Los Angeles as well, too. How do you compare Atlanta to Los Angeles in besides a film and uh, just about everything? Comparing is a bit hard because they're still very, very different. You know, um, the thing that I love about both cities is they're very diverse. There's a lot of art. There's a lot of diversity in food and in cultures. There's really some something for everyone in both cities, no matter what you're into. If you're into nature, if you're into little suburban neighborhoods, if you're into um, very city life, both cities have that. You can be in downtown in LA and feel like it's New York, just warmer. And the same in Atlanta, you can be on Peach Street, uh, street in, in the middle of high rises and, and fog and you kind of get that same big city feel, but you can also be, you know, out in Bughead and have a very suburban area and here you have that too you have all the little boroughs so they actually have quite a lot in common and in terms of film production as well you have so many artists in both cities they should be sister cities to be honest <laughs> right exactly it. and of course I think about with sisters as well too that um you, you know Grace uh, being a vampire and uh connecting with a hotline worker they appear to be sisters and um and, and I guess it's just rather common and um, everything like that? Or maybe what do we learn from this whole thing? Well, they're not sisters, they're lovers. So- um, It, I would it feels like sisters at first, yeah, so. 
<laughs> Let's not make them related. That's a lot less hot. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, yes, yes. They do feel like they have, of course, you know, common ground, and they do because they they want to some they want to discover something. You know, our hotline worker is stuck in her life, and she's very afraid to let go. She strives for perfection and for this idea that she has of what that looks like. And when something calls that is the exact opposite of what she thought might happen in her life, um, it opens up a door in her life and she gets to discover something she never thought she would. And um, I think that's quite important. You know, we we grow up and we're these adults and all of a sudden things have to be perfect and we're trying to structure and we're trying to hold on so tightly to control. But the most beautiful things happen when we let go just a little bit. And that's part of the magic. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you know, be, being a hotline worker as well, too, trying to stop from suicide as well. It got right. to a point, um, you know, being with Grace as well. She forgot how to uh, to save lives at that point. It, it's it's this thing, you know, can can you ever really you can listen, you can you can be there. And I've, you know, spent a night with uh, some hotline workers that have explained some of the, the basics to me. Um, but to hold on to that responsibility will also do something to yourself. So there's a very fine line how to approach things like that, how to talk to people, how to volunteer at places like that. And it's a very tough job. You know, even for the volunteering teens that uh, that I've seen, I was beyond impressed on how they handle with any and all situations. Wow. OK. All right. So I guess you got to be careful or have consideration for those um calling helplines, talk oh, lines, yeah. suicide lines, crisis lines, and everything else. It's like, you got to just show respect. Yeah, absolutely respect. And just, you know, a little bit of kindness and empathy and um, mostly just a listening ear. Uh, a lot of people that call are missing that. They haven't been truly listened to. And that's a big deal because in our society, you know, we work, we, we live to work. There's not really a lot of balance and then um, nobody is listened to the way they should be. And mm. that causes depression. Right, exactly. Yeah. And of course, you know, going from the death of the nightingale, you also bounce over to movies as well, too. So we're going to have the um, second half uh, with, with a movie that's coming out in 25 with um, Annika Pompel. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios, brought to you by official sponsor of The Mike Wagner Show, international warming author, Mia Melsenzia of Missing, also brought by Illuminifical, Think Tank of the Future, The Sweet Psalmist by Serena Wagner, based on the life of King David, now on Amazon, and High Time Music. Check out the latest at hightimemusic.com. We'll be back with the multi-talented author, screenwriter, director, model, and actor winning multiple awards, Annika Pompel, after this time out. We're back with the multi-talented Annika Pompel here on the Mike Wagner Show. We talked about the book, Death of a Nightingale, and heading into part two. And this is something that uh, we're looking forward to in 2025, a feature film. And tell us more about that. Uh, the film that we're doing right now, we're shooting it, uh, is a very small little film. It's only got four actors and two locations. And it's called Odium, after the Latin word for hate. It's For hate? Really? I didn't know that. It's uh, it's not exactly a comedy. It's a little thriller about a, uh, a psychiatrist mother who specializes in teen psychopathy, and she believes that her son is actually on that scale of psychosis, of psychopathy, oh, and wow. that may or may not have killed the neighborhood girl. And so she tries to find little hints. Did he? Did he not? And um, it becomes a little bit of a chess game with her then deceased son to figure out, did he kill the neighborhood girl? And did he leave behind traces for the police to lead the police to herself? So it's a bit of a twisted little thing, a little Rubik's Cube, but uh, it's a lot of fun to to make. And we've been working on it for a long time and getting it together. And uh yeah, independent filmmaking. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. And uh, what are some of the other projects you've got in the works? And if there's other projects you've done, other books or anything like that we haven't covered, feel free to talk about those. Well, I always write. So, you know, I don't just have one or two. Uh, I just handed one into a wonderful producer that is about a story that is near and dear to my heart. It's uh, about PTSD, generational PTSD, about a man that comes back home from the Vietnam War and has that so badly that he accidentally sets his house on fire with his family Ooh. inside it. And um, they survive. However, he takes that to heart so deeply that uh, he removes himself from society and his family and moves to Alaska to live in the Alaskan wilderness for 40 years. Wow. And when his daughter is an adult, 
Her mother has one last wish on her deathbed. She wants to see her former husband one more time to forgive him. So his own daughter tries to hunt down her father in the middle of the Alaskan wilderness. And that's a story. And I quite love that piece. Oh, my gosh, that's certainly amazing. Of course, you touch on PTSD. That's been very common as well, too. And of course, you know, with um, with hotline workers, they got to deal with that. And of course, that's a big thing going on these days. Yes, it is. And people still don't talk about it enough. Nowhere near. You know, you have so many wars, so many forgotten veterans that are on the streets that are using or that are just being way too quiet about things that may or may not have happened for whatever reason. And there's not enough help. There not enough um, helplines. There's not enough even just emotional support to make it OK to call for help. It's frighteningly sad. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, just one more thing. How can we help? You can help by supporting your local veterans association for sure. You can help by just lending an ear. You know, if you know somebody who has been um, to war, who has served in any way, shape or form, if they feel like talking, if they want to talk, don't shut them down. Listen. Mm -hmm. And that's very important as well. In the meantime, where can we find Death of a Nightingale? Where can we find uh, Odium? Where can we find your work at, Annika? Death of a Nightingale is coming out within the next two weeks so that you can find on Amazon. You can find it in your local bookshop if you want something a little bit more uh, lighthearted to uh, to read. Odium will be coming out next year. It'll come out on a streaming platform. We haven't decided yet which one. And the other one is more in the beginning stages. We are still figuring out when and how we're shooting that piece. It's a bigger project, so that'll take some time. <laughs> That's certainly a well, and look forward to having you back and uh, talk more about that with the amazing multi talented Annika Pompo here on the Mike Widener Show with Death of a Nightingale and Odium as well, going back to back with a book and a movie, and uh, just a few more things. What else can we expect from you in 2024, going into 2025, and if you want to, maybe 26 or 27? Well, I keep writing. You know, Death of a Nightingale is the first of a trilogy. Um, there is book two, which is called uh, Hawk of the Night. And then we have book three, which is called Crow of Darkness that completes the trilogy. Uh, I have to still write both of those. <laughs> so that's quite some work. And then I currently have um, two projects that I got hired on to write, two adaptations for two books. Um, that are also going to be shot next year. And uh, from then on, I might target another story that I'm really interested in. I found a few that hopefully I can dig my teeth into and, you know, really bring something out of. And uh, yeah, I think that's, that's plenty. <laughs> and we're certainly looking forward as well to sinking your teeth into it. We say like all the vampires out there. So yeah. take a, take a bite out of everything pretty much. So <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Right. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? I have a few, you know, I've been very, very fortunate to work with some amazing filmmakers, um, one of whom is uh, James Cameron. I got to work with him for um, some time. I still to this day adore his shot design, always will, the way he he approaches filmmaking and his precision. Uh, there are other filmmakers who I absolutely adore. I've always loved Clint Eastwood, both as a director and as an actor. There's an invisibility to his directing, especially in films like Million Dollar Baby and I love that because it truly serves the project. Everything is motivated. Um, I have so many, I could just keep going because they're incredible filmmakers left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. And certainly did as well. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? As a, if starting out in the industry? In general. In general. Well, I would uh, I would repeat what we had earlier. I would say, listen more. You know, listen kindly. Don't just try to relate with your own story, but really listen um, and do that with a little bit more love. I like that. So for anybody considering being a volunteer worker and being on a hotline, please listen more. Take it from someone who's been there. So we're the amazing multi talented Annika Pompel of Death of a Nightingale and Odium coming out in next year here on the Mike Widener Show. Annika, very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'll have you back. Once again, what's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your book or check out your movie or check out your other works? Absolutely. Uh, you can always check out deathofanightingale.net for the Death of a Nightingale series. I'm on Instagram under my name. That would be Annika Pumple or Death of a Nightingale for just the book. If you want to not 
look at all my dog pictures from my cute little, <laughs> which I completely understand. Um, but that's basically the basis of it. Otherwise, Amazon will have the book as well. And I'd appreciate a review because as you know, Mike, they're very, very important. And definitely important indeed. And we'd love to have you back on. So once again, Annika, very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Oh. Looking forward to having you soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. We wish you all best. And Annika, you definitely have a great future ahead. <laughs> thank you, Mike.